chapter 2, verse 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold prop property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Today we want to speak on the subject, Witnesses Wanted. Witnesses Wanted. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, we thank you for this very hour. Oh God, an hour which we come to give your name praise, honor, and glory. Now, oh Lord, we ask that you would fill us up with your word, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit might take control. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Witnesses wanted. God wants those who have been filled with the Holy Spirit to be witnesses to the world. In Acts chapter 2, people from every nation gather for the celebration of Pentecost. For those who don't know, Pentecost is a Jewish festival celebrated in Jerusalem. The apostles and the 120 believers are assembled in a house when a rushing wind of the Holy Spirit descends upon them. The believers begin to speak in native tongue, causing nearby people to question what was going on. But when Peter saw that they were bewildered, he explained to them the power and the importance of the Holy Spirit. He also begs them to get saved and find Jesus. But because they accepted Peter's report, 3,000 were added to their number that day. And now God expects those 3,000 to be a committed witness to the world. God wants them to witness to the world because he created it. Genesis 1.1 states, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God wants them to witness to the world because he died for it. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So now God has 3,000 witnesses to save the world that he created to send his Son to die for. These witnesses are filled with the Spirit, but that's not enough. Uh -huh. Now these witnesses have to be molded, they have to be shaped, they have to be transformed in order to be the best witnesses possible. Uh -huh. 
So every day they continued to meet together in a temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Every day they listened to people who knew about Jesus. Every day they were in constant communication with God. Because in order to be the best witness one can be, one has to prepare themselves. In the same manner, church is where we prepare ourselves to be the best witnesses we can be. In church, songs are sung that inspire us. Songs like, a charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, an ever-dying soul to save, and fit it for the sky. Or songs like, stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. In church, scriptures are read to reconstruct us. Scriptures like 1 Peter 3, 15, which tells us, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Or scriptures like Proverbs 14, 25, which declares, A truthful witness saves lives. But one who breathes out lies is deceitful. In church, we learn that we are all made in God's image. In church, we learn how to take a licking and keep on ticking. In church, we learn how to treat others the way we want to be treated. In church, we learn how to love our neighbors as ourselves. For in order to be the best witnesses we can be, we must prepare ourselves. How can we be the best witnesses for God if we do not come to church and learn and seek God? How can we call ourselves children of God when we're never in communication with God? How can we be soldiers of the cross if we never bear a cross? God wants us to devote ourselves to his teachings, to his beliefs, and to the fellowship so that we can be the best witnesses we can be. For God calls us to be witnesses in the schoolhouse. God calls us to be witnesses on our jobs. God calls us to be witnesses in our cities. God calls us to be witnesses in the field. God calls us to be witnesses in our coming. God calls us to be witnesses in our going. God calls us to be witnesses on our playgrounds. God calls us to be witnesses while riding along in a car. God calls us to be witnesses within our homes. God calls us to be witnesses within the hospitals. God calls us to be witnesses within the nursing homes. God calls us to be witnesses while going through trials and tribulations. God even calls us to be witnesses in the church house. God calls us to be witnesses to the world. And when you think about it, we Christians really have no obligation but to introduce the Lord and witness to those who don't believe. Some of y'all might introduce him as Emmanuel. Some of y'all might introduce him as the Son of God. Some of you might even introduce him as the Lily of the Valley. You might even introduce him as the Bright and Morning Star. But because I am a witness, because I'm still preparing myself, God, because God isn't through molding me, I'll open up my mouth and testify that God is my rock in the weary land. He is my shelter in the time of storm. He is my joy and sorrow. He is my hope for my heavy tomorrow. He is my bridge over troubled water. He is my mind regulator. He is my chief physician. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He is my redeemer. He is my mother when I'm motherless. He is my father when I'm fatherless. But to sum it all up, all I have to say is he's my everything. The hymn writer once said, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, I was wounded, and I was sad. Oh, but I found in him a sweet resting place, and he 
has made me glad. Another hymn writer went on to say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. So is there anybody in here who wants to be a witness for God? Is there anybody who will stand up for Jesus? Then you ought to put your hands together and you ought to bless the name of our Lord. Amen. Witnesses wanted.